I work in the construction industry. The other day, the company I work for was asked to dismantle a shrine in Iwate Prefecture, Japan. Of course, I also went there to assist in the dismantling of the shrine. It had been a long time since worshippers had visited the shrine, and it had been almost abandoned without anyone taking care of it. The priest who owned the shrine made the decision to dismantle it. I pondered whether dismantling the shrine would bring me bad karma. While I was demolishing the pillars of the shrine, my colleague called me over. Hey Tatsu, come over here and look, he said. I went to where my colleague called me, and there was a blackish box there. What is this? I asked. I have no idea, so I called you here thinking you might know what it is. It was placed in a sealed room further inside the main shrine hall. I'm going to call the property manager from now, he replied. The box was about two square meters in size and made of wood. It had an antique appearance and seemed to be decayed. There was a white paper attached to the surface of the box with something written on it. From the characters on the paper, I could tell they were very old. They seemed to be written in a Sidham script, but the paper was tattered and I could barely understand what it said. The sentence I could barely read from the paper was Taisho July sealed the spirit of Ryomen Sukuna at with sorcery. The surface of the wooden box, which seemed to be the top lid, was nailed shut. We were not permitted to forcefully open someone's belongings placed in the shrine, no matter how old and worn out they were, so we couldn't open the nailed box to see what was inside. The property manager told us, leave it there, I'm gonna ask the Prius what he wants to be done with this box. We ended up placing this old wooden blackish box in the prefab warehouse on the shrine property. The next day, before heading to the shrine, I received a call from the property manager. He said, I just spoke to the Prius to confirm how we should handle the blackish box you mentioned yesterday. He told me, never, ever open the box no matter what happens to you. He had a very threatening attitude. He said he would come and pick up the box at a later date. Can you leave it in a warehouse or something? To be safe, I informed the supervisor about the blackish wooden box and what I had heard from the property manager before arriving at the shrine. Supervisor, there is something I need to tell you about the blackish box we found yesterday, I said. The supervisor replied, Ah, that box! You know, you have two Chinese part-time workers that your company hired. They opened up the box before we knew it. Can you please come right away? I had a bad feeling about this. I rushed to the shrine. When I arrived, there was already a large crowd gathered in front of the prefab warehouse where we had placed the blackish box. The two Chinese part-time workers were sitting there, seemingly spaced out. The supervisor explained, they snuck in here last night and opened the box just for fun. The problem is what's inside of the box. Can you come and see for yourself? To be honest, what I saw inside was a mummy with arms in a fighting pose. But the most abnormal thing was that the mummy had two conjoined heads, two arms on each side totaling four arms, and two legs. It was like conjoined twins. At first, I thought it might be some artificial grotesque statue or something. The supervisor said, I don't know what's going on. These two boys have been in days like this, not responding no matter how many times I ask them what's wrong, even though they speak Japanese fluently. After that, we immediately sent the two Chinese guys to the hospital by car. As we discussed whether or not to call the police, the shrine priest arrived at the temple in the car driven by his son. The priest, who appeared to be around 80 years old, immediately started yelling, you open the box! You open the box! You damn ass! We are screwed! We were puzzled by his sudden outburst. After that, he began scolding his son who was standing next to him. You said you were gonna send Ryomen Sukuna to the shrine in Kyoto, didn't you? You didn't send it to the shrine! You damn ass! His fierce scream was beyond what I could imagine from an elderly man over 80 years old. The priest continued. Who opened the box? Are they in a hospital now? Perhaps they are already beyond hope. Anyway, all of you come over here. I will perform a purification ritual on you right here, alright? To be honest, we were truly terrified. The priest started reciting a Shinto prayer for us, which lasted about 30 minutes. 
While doing so, he gave us a strong pass on our backs and shoulders. The players loaded the blackish box into his car and said as he left, I'm sorry, but you guys won't leave for long. Before long, one of the two Chinese guys died in the hospital due to a mysterious heart attack leaving the doctors perplexed. The other one was sent to a mental hospital. Three workers who were involved in the shrine dismantling with us collapsed due to unexplained high fever. I also injured my foot when I stepped in the nail requiring five stitches to sew up the wound. To be honest, I'm still not entirely sure what the mummy inside the blackish box was. I believe it might have been a deformed person who died with a deep resentment, and the two faces of the mummy looked terribly fierce. I thought that the mummy in the blackish box had some connection to the discriminated villagers who were believed to be descendants of the pre-mage castes. Intrigued to uncover the truth and secrets behind the blackish box that caused the prayers to outburst, I tried to contact the press numerous times, but he refused to respond and completely ignored me. However, I managed to obtain the contact number of his 50-year-old son who runs a real estate company. I made an appointment to meet him for a drink. Before discussing the conversation between the Prius son and me, I would like to explain what real man's kuna is, as I have mentioned it frequently as an introduction. Real man's kuna is a demon that features in the Chronicles of Japan. However, it is believed that the description of Ryomen's Kuna in the Chronicles differs from the lesser known history. The Sukuna tribe, a tribal group believed to be foreigners from overseas arrived in ancient Japan and disseminated their own culture. This event played a significant role in the formation of the culture in Izumo, which is present-day Shimane Prefecture and became a motif in the Japanese mythology. Subsequently, the Yamato dynasty invaded Izumo, leading to the forced evacuation of the Sukuna people. They eventually settled in Hida, which is now a part of Gifu Prefecture. According to the Chronicles of Japan, there was a demon in Hida known as Sukuna. The Yamato dynasty dispatched soldiers to Hida in order to subdue Sukuna. In short, Sukuna is believed to have been people from ancient India who possessed expertise in iron manufacturing. A statue of Ryomen Sukuna was discovered deep inside a cave in Nizumo. The Sukuna people were said to have arrived in Japan on a ship called the Kagami no Fune, which emitted a black glow. Kagami no Fune is also known as Ramasen, with Rama referring to the ebony tree. It is speculated that the blackish box may have been made from Rama wood. Based on these details, one hypothesis suggests that Ryomen Sukuna could potentially be one of the descendants of the Sukuna people who escaped from Izumo and settled in Iwate. Actually, the press son seemed hesitant to meet for drinks on the day before our planned meeting. So I suggested discussing this matter over the phone instead, specifically regarding the blackish box. He agreed to my proposal and assured me that he would share as much information as possible. However, he was surprisingly talkative despite initially seeming hesitant to meet for drinks with me. Now, let me summarize the conversation I had with him. The mummy inside the blackish box was revealed to be a deformed individual who used to perform in a freak show during the Taisho period. They were born as conjoined twins. After their birth, they apparently lived in a discriminated village in Iwate Prefecture for a few years. Due to the unbearable poverty, their parents eventually sold them to a human broker. For some reason, they ended up being purchased by the owner of the freak show. To be precise, the mummy was a Sokshimbus, a mummified monk. In a particular folk belief found in a certain region of Japan, it is believed that a monk does not die, but enters eternal meditation for the salvation of all living beings until becoming Mentoria after crossing the threshold of life and death. After undergoing extreme ascetic practices such as a severe fasting or self mummification, a monk's body transforms into Buddha itself, which is referred to as Sokushinbutsu. Sokushinbutsu is a state that monks voluntarily strive for by dedicating themselves to deep meditation and transcending the boundaries of death to become closer to Buddha. However, the mummy I saw at the shrine had been forcibly made to become a Sokushinbutsu. In reality, during the Taisho period, there was an extremely outrageous cult that murdered deformed individuals and turned them into mummies. To my knowledge, this cult still exists in secret somewhere in Japan. Even if I were to mention its name, it's likely that no one knows it. 
One thing I can say for certain about this cult is that it is the epitome of evil. This cult was not merely condemned as heresy by the people. The reader of this cult, Mononobe Tengoku, was truly outrageous, employing only heretical doctrines. In simple terms, they used forbidden rituals considered taboo by other Buddhist and Shinto traditions. When Tengoku visited the freak show, he purchased some of the deformed performers. He conducted experiments on the people he bought to test their life force. If I mention Kodoku, it may help you understand the method he used to test their life force. Kodoku is a type of poisonous magic that exploits the natural tendency of animals to engage in cannibalism. It is found in Japanese folklore, where surviving insects are worshipped as divine spirits, snakes, centipedes, geckos, frogs, and other insects are housed together in the same container, allowing them to prey on each other. The poison obtained from the survivor is then collected and mixed into food and drinks to harm others, gain desires, fortunes, and seek wealth and prosperity. When a person comes into contact with the poison, the symptom can vary, but typically within a certain period, the person will die. Tengoku performed this magic using the deformed individual he purchased from the freak show. He confined them to a basement room. In the end, the conjoined twins whom I saw at the mummy in the blackish box miraculously survived. The duration of this outrageous ritual in which they were confined to the basement room was until they had no choice but to cannibalize each other and consume their own excrement. However, there was actually a secret behind the survival of the conjoined twins in this heinous rite. Tengoku intentionally inflicted fatal wounds on other individuals with a knife before pushing them into the basement room in a more bound state. From the beginning, Tengoku was fascinated by the demonic appearance of the conjoined twins. Therefore, his intention was to formally perform the ritual to transform the twins into mummies as Sokushinbutsu. Immediately after that, the conjoined twins were confined to another room and left there until they died from starvation. Once the confined twins had passed away, their bodies were treated for preservation, and a mummy known as Sokushinbutsu was created. This mummy was called Ryomenskuna. Tengoku decided to name the mummy Ryomenskuna as a tribute to the Japanese mythical creature of the same name. Ryomenskuna is a demon with two faces and four arms mentioned in the Chronicles of Japan. He worshipped it as the cursed principal deity of the cult. He created an extremely outrageous cursed principal deity that had the power to easily curse someone to death and cause even greater catastrophes on the earth. He firmly believed that this cursed principal deity was the last hope to change the world. His intended target to use this cursed principal deity was Japan itself. Furthermore, to amplify the potency of the curse, he placed a specific item inside the abdomen of Ryomen Sukuna. That item was powdered bones of individuals who had rebelled against the Yamato dynasty in ancient Japan approximately 2,000 years ago. He secretly infiltrated a tomb that housed the remains of the Matsuroa no Tami, a group known for rebelling against the Yamato dynasty and pillaged their bones. These are the incidents that are said to be caused by him. The large eruption at Sakura Island in Kagoshima in 1914 resulted in 9,600 casualties. A major earthquake occurred in Akita in 1914 resulted in 94 fatalities. The explosion at Hojo Mine in Fukuoka in 1914 resulted in 687 fatalities. A large fire broke out in Hakodate, Hokkaido in 1916. A significant flood hit the eastern region of Japan in 1917, resulted in 1300 fatalities. The explosion at Kirino Mining in Fukuoka in 1918 resulted in 361 fatalities. An avalanche occurred in Oyashirazu, Niigata in 1922, resulted in 130 fatalities. The Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923 resulted in 14,800 fatalities. The places where the catastrophes occurred were the locations where Ryomenskuna was placed. In short, this cult had its blanches in those places where the catastrophes occurred. I initially thought this mysterious connection was mere coincidence, but according to the priest's son, Tengoku committed suicide the day before the Great Kanto Earthquake. 
He plunged his katana into his throat in front of Ryomen Sukuna at the beach facing the Sagami Bay, which was said to be the epicenter of the Great Kanto earthquake. There is his suicide note next to his body, which stated that Japan must perish. He didn't provide an explanation for how and why Ryomen Sukuna was sent to that shrine. No one knows where Ryomen Sukuna was sent by the press after that. I don't necessarily believe this story. But at the same time, I'm scared of the previous mention that my lifespan may not be long because I sold that mummy at the shrine.